Blue Sniffers and Spruce Snippers, and welcome back to Blitzkrieg Modelworks. I'm Bob, and this is Meng's Panther for the World War Tunes video game. For those that don't know about this video game, it is a uh, first-person shooter video game based in World War II, but everything's very cartoony. Uh, that's kind of their hitch. I haven't actually seen it. I've seen some gameplay footage, and it's, it looks kind of interesting. I'm more interested in the kits. Um, now, Meng have done a whole series of kits for promotion for this game. There's a King Tiger, there's a Tiger 1, there's a Panzer 3 or a Panzer 4, I'm not sure which. There's a T-34, um, there's also a Firefly and a, and a Sherman. Uh, I've been waiting a while for my local hobby shop to pick this up. Uh, it was around $27 Canadian. And I haven't seen anybody do an inbox review. I've seen a few builds done up. They're incredibly simple to do. There's like two sprues in the whole box and the sprues aren't even the size of the box. This is going to be a really cool like one day build and maybe a couple of days for painting and weathering. Um, just something funky to put up on the display shelf, something a little bit different. A little lighthearted considering all the, the photo etch and resin and everything else I usually do. Uh, just something I can blast out of the box and just have a little bit of fun with it. So I'm just going to move this over to the workbench we'll take a quick look at it. This is the box. Nice stylized artwork. Um, the vehicle is kind of sort of a Panther G, but it's got a whole bunch of mishmash stuff. You can't expect accuracy out of this. I mean, there's not even a, a bow gunner's hatch. A little artwork showing you what it'll look like completed. A little ad for their paints. And then a few other views and some information of the actual vehicle. And a few QR codes if you have a scanner on your phone so you can go to various websites. And it is Olga approved, whatever the heck that means. Um, I should say this will be the first main kit I've ever going to build. I have one other main kit in my stash right now, which I won't be building this year. It's, um, the, was it the A29 Tortoise? The, the, like the heavy British Stug, basically. Um, that's going to be another paper panzer for another day, but not, not for this year. Uh, it'll be next year for something else. Let's take a look at the inside. All right, we start with the instructions. They are in full color, uh, kind of a matte paper. Instructions and warnings in several languages. That's your sprue map, such as it is. That's all there is. There's actually surprisingly quite a few steps for such a simple kit. There's 11 steps total. Um, doing your drivetrain, upper hull to lower hull in your tracks, which are one piece. I'll show you that in a minute. Lower hull or uh, hull detail, left and right. Rear plate, which is actually assembled separately, and then it glues on to the other rear plate that's actually on the lower hull. Your turret. And turret uh, details, and then attach. That's all there is to it. It's really simple. And then they have painting instructions and decals. They give you Ming, AK Colors, and Acrejon. Acrejon? Never heard of that. It's probably a, another Ming type paint. That's it for the instructions. Okay, here's the upper and lower hull. And these things are tiny. As a comparison, here's a Dragon 135th scale Panther F that I'm working on. So it, it's really cute. <laughs> Lower hull slide molded. Nice and simple. There's a little bit of flash. Take that off with the utility. It's pretty easy. Copyright marks for Ming and World War Tunes. Upper hull. Now normally I go through each sprue separately, but since this is it for the sprues, other than the tracks and the decals, uh, I'm just going to blitz through both these together. You get sprue A and sprue B. 
get sprue A. Very simple, some fairly big attachment points. A little bit of sinkhole there, but no big deal. It's a cartoon tank. And the wheels and tra spare tracks, drive sprockets, idler wheels, cute little tow cables, and believe it or not, they actually have a slide molded barrel. <laughs> That is rather cute. You know the bolt cutters are better than on some of the stuff I've seen from Dragon in the 90s. And these are the only other parts in the kit. Uh, the tracks which are actually molded as one piece rubber band tracks. There is no, um, there's no attachments to them. You just have to cut off this little pore plug. There's virtually no detail on the inside, which is no big deal. The outside is kind of, sort of, panther-ish. You get two of those. Uh, feel kind of like rubbery sticky, not sticky sticky. Don't know how well paint's going to stick to it. And then there's your decals. They look fairly thin. It says it's made by Meng in China. Don't know who actually makes them. They do look rather, rather nice. Registers good. Pretty thin looking. So I'm going to try and do this as a one-day build. Um, just for giggles, I'm going to actually record me building this. None of the prep work of getting anything off of the sprues or anything. Um, but actual building and then uh, doing some painting. Um, just do a, a standard three-color camo, see how that works out, and do some weathering. So this is, this is easy, like a couple of hours maybe to build this thing, and then a day or maybe two to, to paint and weather, you know, waiting in between coats for everything to dry. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or constructive comments, please in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I try and put stuff out every week or two, depending on work schedule and what the weather's like. Uh, the studio gets rather warm in the summer, um, so I don't get a chance to really come in here too much. Uh, but again, thank you very much. If you have subscribed, thank you for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.